In response to a recommendation given by a committee headed by Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State, uh, in the course of the National Economic Council meeting, which suggested the use of the pension fund to implement capital project, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has warned President Muhammadu Buhari's administration to refrain from touching the 2.1 trillion pension fund. Now, joining us once again to have this conversation is Obi Ajewa. She's a legal practitioner. And, of course, we still have Ola Lekon Adigun. He's a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'll start with you, um, Ola Lekon. Um, some people would say that pension funds in other countries can be used for all kinds of things, but it would be replaced. What's your take? Well, uh, on the issue of uh, getting loans or uh, getting uh, a rising de debt profile, particularly in this regard, uh, borrowing from the pension fund, I really don't see it as much as a problem. Uh, getting getting loan from any sources uh, from any source or sources as the case may be it's, it shouldn't be a problem but what i will have issues with is what is what these loans are used for mm -hmm. we need uh, uh, we need we, we need to see it in terms of real infrastructure because i don't see anywhere in the world where you borrow for consumption because what we what, what i was we, about to ask that i mean if you're borrowing for a project that is not going to yield money how do you repay that money yes that's even the, that's even my own concern that, so we will not have a situation in the future where we will have to borrow externally to pay pension and that's my fear about the issue so i align myself with the pdp position about uh, the, the concern mm -hmm. so i'm not sure pdp is saying that uh, the government is uh, a faulty for borrowing. They're every government in the world actually borrows. But what I'm what I'm concerned with is what these loans are going to be used for in the short and the, uh, medium and, and the long term. Abi, you seem to <coughs> disagree with government even touching this money. So why? I think it's illegal. Really? I think it's illegal. But um, because these are people's lives we are talking about, people's livelihood. It is set aside to pay the people as and when needed. But it can be used, it can be loaned to the government for whatever business they want to do, as long as it can yield money. Pension monies. funds are not to be touched. Is there a law, is there I, an act in I, the constitution I, I, that I says... I wasn't told this topic, even okay. though I've researched. But I feel that there's a law that says pension funds should not be touched. But if... Let's take for instance that, you know, the government does have... Um, genuine reasons for taking these monies and they really want to genuinely pay these monies back. What is wrong with that? First of all, I, 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 I shudder sure, 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 sure when I see the loan profile of this government. Mm. It, is, it, is, it is running. It is, it before, it, it, before it was crawling, then it started working. Now it's accelerating. It's as if, oh, before I go, I must slam these people with 100 billion extra debt on their head. First of all, I don't understand why you cannot work within what you have, number one. Number two, pension funds should not be used. How will you pay it back? Okay, through the debt servicing that is already high, although the Minister of Finance was saying the debt ratio and this, this, this is still, is still, is still acceptable and whatnot. But what do they want the pension fund for? What, you have to explain why some, some people's lives will be, will, be, will be used, because that's people's lives. If you don't pay a pensioner his money, by one or two months, the person will be, will be begging and the next thing he has a cardiac arrest is gone. Yeah, let's look at what um, the PDP said now. Um, the PDP National Publicity Secretary, Kola Logodiyan, um, warned the presidency to dismiss that recommendation of having to dip its hands in uh, the, the pension funds, adding that despite the huge debt incurred by mm -hmm. the Buhari government, there is nothing on ground to justify it. He also went ahead to say there's nothing on ground in the area of infrastructure in spite of their huge spending. How has this translated to good living for Nigerians? What we can see, he says, is ostentatious living of all APC members so we cannot support the move to dip their hands in the pension fund to implement infrastructural projects. Let's talk infrastructure. Um, the former Lagos State Governor, Minister of Works, Power, uh, did say recently that uh, we're 
making too much noise about the fact that we have bad roads, that the roads are not as bad as we make it seem. And, uh, you know, and then the next week he comes up with another one that we are part of the reason why the roads are bad. So do we really see a sincerity of purpose in this? Because the PDP, the PDP is saying we've not seen anything. We are indebted highly under this administration, and we have not been able to point to what these monies have been used. Maybe this, the PDP is saying this because they're the opposition. Do you have anything different from what the PDP is saying? Maybe you've seen some things that the monies are being used for. Well, uh, thank you for, for, the, for that. Well, PDP uh, uh, has the right to uh, its opinion. It's an opposition party, so it's understandable if it makes uh, a pol uh, highly political statements. However, I will say that I still, like I said in my opening statement on this, uh, this section, I don't see anything wrong in seeking loans. So long as I can see what's, uh, uh, what you're doing with the loans. And I, and I think Nigerians need explanation about what these loans are meant for. We need not take anything from, uh, away from the government that government has actually invested in the area of uh, uh, infrastructure, in railways, for example. I live very close to the railway, uh, uh, in, in, in my, so I can see a lot of uh, investment done in that area. Okay. Even though I just see more, I just see more like an up, uh, that an upgrade of colonial infrastructure. Even though I don't, I, so I you think that all the loans that we have got, or, or, or all the indebtedness that we have gotten into under this administration, is justifiable by the rails? No. It, that's like I said. That in that area, I have to commend them because. But the, does it justify again, the level of indebtedness that we are facing as a country? Now, on the roads that you mentioned, uh, that fashion, I really don't see much road because, for example, in Lagos, I I don't see much of road construction. Uh, in terms of investment in road construction, I don't see much in that area. But in the area of railway, we have to give it to them. In the area of, uh, in, uh, for example, the building of some universities, for example, the one in there. Uh, and that one was, it's not even... How do universities generate income in any way? How is this a developmental infrastructure project that can help us? Because the PDP is saying... All of the things that they're doing, none of these things have translated to good living for Nigerians. How is a university in Kanu State or Katsina State is going to better the loss of the people there. Thank you very because much. Because they have to pay fees to go to those universities. Good. That is one of the that's one of that's one of the problems I've been having with proliferation of universities in Nigeria. I don't think we need uh, the uh, about a hundred or so universities in Nigeria currently. Because if you look at it, how much do they generate? And that's why I've been in support of this IPPIS uh, system in the, because if you don't generate revenue, you can't claim autonomy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't claim autonomy. You, uh, it's like living in your father's house. Uh, you, it, your father feeds you. Your father does everything for you, and you are claiming you're autonomous. It doesn't work that way. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So in that area, I, 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 but you, you, can't, you, you can't take the fact away that we are still a developing nation. Where our, many of our, we are the youngest population in Africa, about 63 million young people in Nigeria. These youth need education. We just have to provide for them in that, in that regard. But however, if I'm going to say that, what's in terms of justification, I may not be, I'm not a spokesman for the government, but I am only saying what I can see. But that does not justify huge indebtedness. For example, a dipping your uh, uh, seeking loan from pension for people that have worked for over 35 years. I, for me, uh, <laughs> there, there's no justifiable reason for that. Recently, we, uh, we sought a loan from a World Bank. I think uh, it was also on Wednesday that uh, the, the presidency. The, and also approved the what's yeah. it called approved a loan from World Bank. So all these things are things we need to really account for, in my opinion. Talking about the World Bank recently, uh, if not last year, they complained about the fact that Nigeria has dropped in the list of countries that have been able to service their debts, and even how these these loans have been able to help them. Now Ethiopia is on top of that list because. Mm -hmm. The monies that have been coming to Ethiopia, you could see it. It's, it's, they inject it into the economy, so the, there's a boost in the economy. Uh, the likes of Rwanda, they were on that list. Nigeria was nowhere on that list. In fact, the top people in the top countries in the world. So we keep taking these loans, but it is not reflected. So my question is, where does the money go? 
You see, there was somebody that, um, there was a time we were in a group and we then did some comparative analysis of the sort of train they built in, was it Ethiopia that opened a beautiful train station and for how much and is the latest train. I think it was Kenya. Uh, latest train, supersonic train. I think it was and Kenya. And we look at our, our, next, our last generation trains that they're bringing to Nigeria and look at the cost they're doing. Did you say last generation? Last yes, generation. Very, wow. many of them were because, Second World War. because the trains we should have are the ones that I'll be in Lagos in the next two, three hours, I should be in Abuja. Yeah. And um, I hope you know that the trains from um, Kaduna has been breaking down mm -hmm. to Abuja has been breaking down. Wow. And that, that, is a, that, that, that is not good at all. Then, then secondly, we look, at, um, we look at what they're spending and we look at what we are getting. You see, my grasp with APC is that the, when I see APC, I remember the UK Labour Party. Borrow, 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 big, 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 a big governance, governance, increasing tax and everything, which is what is happening now. By next year, everybody will be like, pay your tax. If you don't pay your tax, we're after you. That's the regime with this TIN they're introducing. And that's not the way it is. I've always said governance, government should provide minimal government help. Just give the policies and let the private sector run with it. And private sector is not, is not a John Bull that doesn't know anything about um, road construction. But because he's related to me as a minister of works, I will not give him. No, it, it will be the Julius Beggar, the big, big companies that have a track record that you give them and concession, give do them concession and say, okay, for this place, you see, for this place, you see, for real, okay, do this route. They run it for about 20, 30 years, renew after 20, 20 years, pay the government some, start giving government some profit sharing. That's how you run a, a, a country if you're serious. But not, not, not getting, not getting um, loans, big, big loans, and we're not seeing the value. Let's talk about the pensioners before um, we wrap things up. Um, they're still asking for their monies to be paid. A lot of them are still dropping dead on lines mm -hmm. trying to... I remember my grandfather before he passed. Uh, he re he retired as a, I think a commissioner uh, in the Ministry of Works. He, I think it was a permanent secretary at the time, also in the federal ministry when we had the southeastern the south uh, eastern states, eastern Nigeria. And the process of trying to get his pension, especially the federal pension, is <laughs> hell. Mm. And I, I think I've said it on this show before. I, I, I met a lady who, I think she called on my radio show complaining about the fact that she had not gotten her pension for months. All the stores in the area, know she, they know her because she's owing all of them. <coughs> she's not been able to pay them. And she doesn't know where the next meal is going to come from. And these are people who have dedicated years of service. And this is a pension that has still not been borrowed from yet. <laughs> so... As, as much as the PDP is making a political statement, do we think that there is some truth to this because of the antecedents of not just this administration, but previous governments in the country you so see, that it doesn't look like an attack on just this government? You see, the bane of the government is documentation. There's something called ghost workers. You see, before BVN, somebody was telling me about a person that works in an office and he was collecting three or four salaries. What? He was collecting three or four salaries, different names, collecting three or four salaries. But BVN, he could not do that. He could collect only one, one salary, you know. So now, pension is the same thing, ghost workers. So a lot of states don't even know the actual, Manpower. The actual pensioners they have. That's the truth. A lot of states don't have the actual pensioners they have. But a friend of mine is now going around send, uh, send sanitizing the pension scheme for people. Mm. She has a package that once they do it, they're, they're home free. Their pension, their pension needs are sorted out. Mm. Now, the second issue again is um, money. 
Now I have worked my I saw my grandfather, he's worked for 35 years. Like your grandfather, he's worked for 35 years. For the government, he was loyal, he did not have any kickback because if he had he kickbacks, he would not be talking about it. He didn't even now, have a mansion. If I, <laughs> if I, his granddaughter, now goes into government, do you think I'll be as faithful and as loyal as he is when I, I wouldn't even go? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I would yeah, never no, do it. no, but that that is the thinking. Oh, see this person, he worked. And um, I, I, heard okay. she, I heard Tafa Balewa did not have a house, and Sheo Shagari did not have a house. Those are the old people. But if, if Sheo Shagari's son, I'm just saying, looking at the history, looking at how rubbish the government treats people. Now, any right-thinking person will say, ah, if I leave this place, God knows what they will do to me. I bet, let me, let me put aside for raining day and for my children. That is how it starts. That is corruption. Yes, mm. yes, that is corruption, and that is how it starts. So government, one way or the other, hand, has a hand in how much uh, corruption is growing in its lips and bounds, because that's what she's trying to say. Do you agree? And that's one of the uh, fear of the unknown that mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, have uh, working in the civil service, for example, they, they, because they don't know what, what becomes of them after they leave the service. They are, since their pension may not be paid or they may struggle for so many years. I was uh, at, uh, at the, one of the centers to when the uh, pension, the, the federal government paid some pensioners maybe last year or so, and I was like, some, I could see the, the, you know, the, the, the happiness on their, they've not gotten paid for so many, many, uh, uh, and, and I was uh, talking to some, what's it called, uh, former Nigerian Airways uh, workers who were, dis who were dismissed. I was, I was like, they don't really know when they are going to be paid again. Mm. Do you understand what I'm trying? So this is one of the things that, that's why I'm against this idea of uh, borrowing from the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the pension, for example, but I don't have a problem with that. Uh, with, with getting loan for infrastructure. All right. Well, I want to thank uh, Obi Ajegwa. Uh, she is a lawyer. And of course, uh, Olalekon Adigun, a political analyst. Thank you very much for this conversation. Interesting uh, talk that we have had. Well, my take is coming up right after our Plus report. So stay with us. The Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on Thursday has asked the Department of State Service, DSS, and Justice Ijoma Ojuku to submit a memorandum on the alleged invasion of a federal high court within 24 hours. The committee has also asked the Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakar Malami, counsel to Omoyeli Showere Femi Falano, the Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, Tony Ojuku, and the Office of the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court to each submit a memorandum on the incident. Each of the memoranda is expected to detail the events of the day. What we resolve to do, however, as a committee, because we still have to report back to the Senate, is to implore uh, the DG uh, DSS, uh, the Solicitor General and Permanent Secretary Minister of Justice, the ES National Human Rights Commission, uh, Mrs. Femi Falano, and uh, go and any other interested uh, stakeholders from within the civil society uh, present here to please avail us you know, with their memorandum, you know, uh, within the next 24 hours. We will really appreciate that because we have to do a report uh, for the Senate and the fact that all of you have, uh, I mean, chosen to be here to honor this invitation shows that we all mean well for this country. Well, it's time for my take. The EFCC, of course, is a security operative or a security um, outfit put together by the government to tackle financial crimes or any misappropriations. Now, your job, EFCC, is to walk in silence. So when you strike, you know that you have all the ammunition. Instead of us having all of these media trials and dragging issues up and down and sometimes having these cases thrown out of court, I'm thinking the EFCC needs to do some, you know, rain check. You need to sit back and call your boys together and say, where are the loopholes? What do we need to do? How do we get ourselves together so we can do a better job? Because as we speak, and I'm not saying anybody's guilty or not guilty, but your job is to have a watertight case so that we don't make a mess 
of all of the energy and the resource that you have. And talking about the government, the federal government trying to dip its hands into the coffers of the pensions fund to fund infrastructural projects in the country. I, if I may ask, how do you intend to get these monies back into the coffers? I mean, as we speak, pensioners are still complaining about unpaid pensions. The several states who are still yet to pay. And now you want to dip your hands into the funds. That means that, I mean, it's going to be free for all, I'm guessing. And I don't think pensioners are ready to take that risk. If these loans are being taken from the pensions fund for something better that would yield monies and would have plowed back profits that will come back in time for these pensions to be paid, then there won't be a problem. But if you want to take these monies to build roads, how do we get these monies back? I think that sometimes our governments need to really do some studies, research before coming up with these ideas. As nice and as interesting as they may sound, I don't think that the pensioners in Nigeria will be smiling about it. So let it not just be that the PDP is making a political statement, but have you asked the people themselves what they think about it? Because your government is for the people by us, the people, and it's supposed to benefit us, the people. I am Mary Anna Cohn. It's been Post Politics.